my name is Sachin Vador, and uh, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about the uh, Arista's uh, multi-domain macro segmentation service, also called as MSS. Um, now, earlier in the presentation, we did uh, talk about the fact that uh, segmentation is the uh, enforcement aspect of Arista Zero Trust uh, security framework, right? Um, so just uh, to give you a quick idea, you know, where MSS stands here uh, is um, there are a variety of uh, segmentation uh, uh, solutions that are already present in EOS, right? So for example, we already support VLANs, VRFs, uh, VXLAN, uh, ACLs as form of segmentation. And these have been working well for, uh, you know, variety of use cases. Now, what we have done is we have also added uh, MSS, which is basically a set of capabilities which are open and standard based and also allow us to uh, integrate the security policies into the network. Uh, now, just to give a quick example, you know, we have MSS Firewall, uh, which is basically our integration with uh, the leading firewall vendors. Uh, and what this allows us to do is allows us to dynamically do service insertion based on the security intent uh, described by the policies that are defined on the firewall. Uh, we then have the MSS host, which is our integration with VMware, NSX, uh, which again gives us the consistent enforcement of the policies at both the uh, for the virtual uh, workloads as well as for the physical workloads. And then finally, the topic of today, uh, which we are going to focus more on, is our group-based segmentation approach, which is called the MSS group. Okay. So uh, before we dive deep into what MSS group is, um, we just want to give a quick glimpse on, you know, what the problem MSS uh, group is trying to solve here or what group-based segmentation is trying to solve in general, right? So if you look on the left-hand side here, uh, we have a traditional way of doing segmentation, which is VLANs, which has served us very well and which works for a lot of use cases. Uh, but there is one uh, thing with this approach is that it's, it's uh, tied up to the network addressing, right? So the IP addresses and the subnets and the VLANs are closely tied up. Um, so what happens is, you know, if you wanted to get more granular segmentation, like for example, break a particular VLAN into uh, uh, two uh, separate VLANs or create new VLANs, then this results into an uh, issue where, you know, you might have to start thinking about, okay, how do I design for the IPs and, you know, do I need to re-IP my network and things like that. Now, there are a lot of use cases which, you know, this might be a problem when we are trying to get granular segmentation. So, for example, like one of the cases you could think of, like, you know, you have a set of cameras that you want to put it in a certain group. Now you want your DVRs in the network to be in a certain group. Uh, and the cameras and DVRs could both be part of the same VLAN, same subnet. Or you have cameras which are located on different floors. You know, they might be into different IPs and different subnets. What you really want is you want the flexibility so that you can assign these devices based on the type of devices or the type of function they do, irrespective of their network boundaries or the VLANs they belong to, right? So we want that flexibility so that we can define these groups uh, uh, based on um, how we want. And then we can define the policies between the groups. So for example, we might want the cameras to be able to talk to DVRs, but not within themselves, right? So we can have some of those uh, uh, definitions you know, through the MSS group. Now, one other thing to consider is the scale. Um, now, traditionally, what has happened is, uh, okay, get yeah, it. So traditionally, what has happened is, you know, we've used ACLs for uh, enforcement. You know, they they are a good way to do things, but, you know, uh, they have inherent uh, scalability issue because of the limited TCAM resources, right? So as the number of endpoints keep growing, uh, we uh, start to reach the TCAM boundaries. Uh, to solve this is basically to, uh, the approach is to do group-based segmentation where you group the endpoints into a certain group and then you define the uh, the policies uh, referencing those groups. So effectively what happens is you can scale your TCAMs better doing that way. Uh, and the, the issue is, you know, how do you convey that group information, right? Um, so a solution that's al already available today, you know, the way it's done is basically putting that group information into the, the Ethernet frame itself, into the packet. Uh, so that, that's great, you know, you, have, you solve the scalability problem, but now what happens is essentially you made the, uh, the Ethernet frame proprietary and only the, uh, the switches that are following your implementation can kind of uh, understand these uh, uh, frames, right? And for if you want to put this implementation into a multi-vendor environment, then you kind of have to start deploying overlays where you hop over the other devices so that you know they don't drop that frame because they wouldn't understand the frame. Now, with that said, we laid down the problems. So now, how are uh, how is the uh, uh, MSS group really solving this, right? 
So MSS Group is Arista's implementation of the group-based segmentation solution. Uh, now, as we mentioned before, you know, it allows you to uh, uh, separate the groups and group membership from the the, uh, the network addressing boundary, right? So you can essentially have devices which are belonging to different VLANs, part of the same group, or part of or devices belonging in the same VLAN, part of different groups, right? So you can have that flexibility. Now, one other thing uh, unique with RSA implementation is we are not modifying any frames, right? So the, the group information is not being uh, put down into the frames itself. Rather, all the information that's needed to figure out what the source uh, group is for a packet or what the destination group is for the packet is all within the uh, local to the box itself. So we don't need to modify the packets. And what that means is, you know, it, it readily works in a multi-vendor environment where the enforcement is done on the Arista switches, but at the same time, it could the frames could be sent out and, you know, it works in the multi-vendor uh, environment uh, uh, seamlessly, right? Um, and then essentially we, we spoke about the group-based approach, how it can uh, efficiently scale the TCAM. Um, so so that, that's the benefit we get again, for, because we are referencing the groups and not really the endpoint so that the scaling is done independent of the uh, the endpoint scale. Uh, and then finally, the solution is uh, highly programmable, right? So we have the APIs available. So essentially what that gives us is we can easily integrate with third party identity providers or NAC providers as we are uh, mentioning in this example here, right? So now if I have to explain the architecture, you know, we could divide this into three layers. Uh, the enforcement layer we already kind of spoke about in the previous slides, you know, how we are doing the enforcement. Uh, now, the cool thing about this solution is um, all the group definitions, all the policy definitions can all happen uh, directly on the box via CLI or EAPI. So, so that means, you know, the solution can work on itself. Uh, but if you have a larger uh, deployment, you know, you can use Cloud Vision to orchestrate uh, your uh, uh, configuration so that you can have a consistent policy enforcement across all your uh, switches in the network. Now, when we look uh, at the top layer, which is the policy and the admin layer, so this is where we are doing the group definitions, the group, uh, the IP to group memberships, and also the, uh, the policy, which kind of uh, dictate what groups can talk to what other groups. Now, as we are showing here, we can do this on Cloud Vision, uh, statically and you know we can uh, perform it for uh, static environments but if for more dynamic environments where you are using like a NAC or a identity provider you, know, you can use uh, we can easily integrate with uh, uh, the third party uh, NAC providers and partners right as we are showing here uh, what's the actual difference then between doing this, I mean, I get that it's a group instead of individual lines, but I mean, the group still has to contain all the individual information, right? So where's the benefit of um, grouping things versus just doing um, more of a standard ACL? Can you explain that a little bit more as far as why that's different on the, on the data plane side? Sure. Yeah. So, so essentially what happens is like, if you are uh, defining the endpoints directly, right? So as the number of endpoints grow, you know, you start having to occupy uh, the TCAM entries, right? But uh, with group, what happens is you uh, are grouping those endpoints and putting it into a group, and then you have a group identifier. And then when you are creating the rules in TCAMs, you are only using those group identifiers. So what happens is as long as you're not increasing the number of groups, your uh, the endpoints can keep growing, but they're still part of a particular group. And you are going to be kind of uh, giving the same kind of a treatment or same policy for that group, right? So your endpoints can grow, but the groups are, are still being referenced in the TCAM and they are not growing unless yeah. you are adding in more groups. Right, and that makes sense. I, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry if I'm missing this totally, but um, the the group identity, because you're not doing any tagging or any you know packet or, or frame manipulation, the group identity still has to be looked up in a table, right? Right, and, and we actually do it all through hardware lookups. So it, it's all contained local to the box. So yeah, I mean, just uh, uh, a sample, you know, quick uh, workflow of how the MSS group, uh, uh, you know, works with the NAC. Uh, so for example, you know, the NAC can uh, get uh, information about the endpoints and, you know, profile it into the different uh, uh, groups, you know, uh, as we are showing here. And it can use like DHCP fingerprinting, SNMP polling, flow data, a lot of different stuff, right? Now, once the NAC gets this information and uh, puts it into uh, the groups, uh, it can also define the group-to-group -group policies. 
And that's where, you know, uh, uh, the information can now be passed on to Cloud Vision. And we can do it through multiple ways. You know, the NAC can uh, use the Cloud Vision APIs to give this information to Cloud Vision. Or we can, you know, subscribe to a NAC uh, if they are offering like a subscription base to read the information back from them, right? So we can do that. And then as once we have that information, Cloud Vision can act as an orchestrator and quickly configure uh, the switches. Okay. Uh, so just a quick demo, you know, uh, we have a, a setup here with uh, our endpoints connected to our switches. Um, and then what we are really doing here, you know, uh, we are on Cloud Vision. We are using Cloud Vision as a uh, way to enter this information. Uh, we can quickly enter the segments uh, and assign the membership to the segments. Uh, and as you would see while I'm doing this, I am assigning uh, uh, members of the same VLAN, same subnet to different segments, uh, like with some belonging to the cameras, the other belonging to the DVRs, right? I'm going to skip past this. Uh, so basically, essentially what we are doing is we define the segments, we're defining the policies, which are basically uh, saying what segments can talk to what other segments. Uh, and then once we have that information here, uh, we can see that, you know, we are allowing the cameras uh, to talk to the DVR, for example, but not to the other cameras. Now, once we have this, uh, we can quickly check and make sure that, you know, we are uh, uh, satisfying the policies. As we can see, the pings between the same uh, endpoints within the same VLAN doesn't go through because we don't allow the cameras to talk to each other. But at the same time, the other member in the same VLAN, which is a DVR, we can um, uh, get uh, information to that, right? Um, once that is done, you know, like we see some packets were allowed, some packets were not allowed. So we can go to Cloud Vision, the topology view, which can give us information about what packets were dropped. Uh, it gives you the segment matrix, you know, which you can easily consume and see, you know, what the groups are talking to, what other groups, how many packets are getting dropped. Uh, and also we can get a forward view to see what kind of traffic is actually being passed on, right? So this gives us a quick view to make sure everything is working fine. Uh, and to change things, you know, what we'll do around is we'll remove one of the members from the camera group, assign it to the DVR group. Now, just because we did this, uh, since the cameras are allowed to talk to DVR, you know, we can see that the camera, uh, which were not able to talk to each other earlier, can now ping uh, each other successfully. Uh, and then quickly, uh, you know, I wanted to show a NAC example where we are getting this information dynamically rather than the static assignment that we just did. Uh, so in this case, the NAC example happens to be Forescout, where it has done all the discovery for the endpoints and it has profiled them into different groups, as we can see here. Uh, now, once this has been done, you know, we just uh, uh, start a policy on the, the NAC side, which assigns it uh, MSSG group tag. Uh, and as soon as this policy is started, you know, if you keep an eye on the left hand side, the, the group information and the member information dynamically comes to the uh, the this cloud vision side, right? Uh, and then once this is done, uh, as the number of uh, endpoints get profiled to the same groups, you know, we will start seeing those uh, entries uh, keep increasing here. Uh, and similarly for the policies, you know, Forescout allows you to define the policies. So we, we have defined the group to group policies and what we will do is at this point, we have nothing imported, but as soon as we export it from the uh, uh, NAC side, we can get those policy information here as well. So this is just to show a dynamic workflow and at the end, and, uh, in the background, everything is still working the same way, you know, where uh, if a group is allowed to talk to another group, the traffic will go through, or if, it, if it's not, then it will be dropped. And it's independent of the network addressing. And, um, and like we showed the example here, you know, it's a highly programmable solution, so it can essentially integrate with a, a NAC of your choice uh, as long as we are calling the right APIs. Um, the identifier in your example was an IP address. How do you kind of, is this the only mechanism or how do you avoid that not somebody spoofing this uh, IP address and then trying to gain the membership of a particular group? So this IP address information is actually, so it's coming from a couple of sources, right? We could either do it uh, locally through the, uh, uh, the cloud vision where, you know, the admin uh, will have the access and he's defining the segments and assigning the membership, or it's actually coming dynamically through the, the NAC, right? So, and, and typically how the NAC would work is, you know, it would have the profiling as part of its uh, radius authorization or uh, the Mac based authorization. So, so that way we know that, you know, the, the endpoints are first getting admitted into the network and then they get profiled into the groups. And then those groups are dynamically being sent out to the, uh, the, the cloud vision site to orchestrate to the switches. 
So the example in here, because it went really fast, but what it looked like was there were slash 32 definitions for each of those, and then those are put into a group. So you're saying that was just for demo purposes, or there's, there's other mechanisms? We could have specified a slash 24 or slash 32. Um, so we could look it at a subnet level or at uh, the individual level, right? So if it's at a subnet level, then we would act on the whole entire subnet or or if it's at, uh, if you want a specific uh, entry within that subnet, then you could specify a slash 32, uh, which would take preference. Okay. But at some point you said that the, that the policy was independent of network addressing. I think we're trying to reconcile that when it was IP based. Right. So when, when I say independent of network addressing, it, it, it means the fact that, you know, um, like with VLANs, you know, you have that subnet and then you, uh, that subnet is part of a particular VLAN, right? And then it, it's, uh, it's the VLAN segmentation acts on those uh, uh, endpoints. Here, what we could do is we could actually have uh, IPs from the same subnet be part of different groups or the IPs from different subnets be part of the same group. So that's how it's independent of those network boundaries. Uh, so, sorry if that was... Uh, not very clear at the beginning, but yeah, it's, okay. it's independent of the network boundaries there. So the other thing I think I'm hearing there is that this product is not really defining those groups, but it's enforcing groups that are handed to it by the four staff. Uh, it, it's actually both of them. So like we saw in the early, uh, I mean, actually the, the slide that you see right now, uh, this is a, a screenshot from the, the cloud vision. So we can actually statically define the groups and the members to the group uh, and the policies all uh, at the uh, cloud vision layer, or we can even do it through CLI, right? So, so we don't really need to depend on a NAC, like for example, Forescout, like we saw in the demo to give us that information. Now, what that does is if the environment is pretty static, then yes, this, this is the way to go. Uh, but if you wanted to integrate with, uh, you know, your radius authorization workflows and uh, uh, with the NAC provider, then we also have that option to do that. So uh, we don't really need that information to come from the outside. We can self-define it uh, through CLI or through Cloud Vision. Or if, if it's already available uh, in the NAC, then we can import that information and uh, do the enforcement. 